Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this unseen video for NXT. But of course, we've got so much more to talk about. This is stacked. We've got to get straight to it. I've just got a couple of things to say first. First of all, if you are going to tag me, try and quote tweet just because we've been getting a few more where people have just been like tagging me in things um that's cool but i like it to be quote tweeted that way i can get your name on screen as well so that you get the credit the other thing as well try to avoid uh tagging me in any sean ross sap tweets he actually got in touch and said like would you mind leaving me off this he wasn't being funny there was no issues he was just saying like you know his notification were just full like you guys have gone crazy and uh i think like he's just saying like is there any way we can find a different way so it's fine i've already got him set up to like on a list that i can keep an eye on so uh just a couple of things to be uh aware of so with that being said so much to get through let's get into it so we've got this from uh, mr stone keeping it real am i not this is better for it is mr stone it is von wagner it is the kids they're uh just having a little bit of fun with the metaphor logo and graphics so shakim thank you then this from uh, dave uh, you can see joey putting this out is it a true heel turn if there isn't a dimmed chair promo so uh, an example there of some classic uh, heel turns in the past uh, with them sitting in the ring and uh, the top left the fantastic uh, promo from today's nxt carmelo hayes then uh we've got this so tlb said i've listened to this again and those footsteps they sound like a woman walking what i would say is i've listened to it i think it's really hard to tell i mean you can hear someone walking but it's hard to establish if they're male or female I don't know. It's really, really difficult. I think it could be Julia. It could be Okada, um, Tamatonga, Tonga Loa. Um, a few people have thought maybe Mick Foley because of the three faces thing. But I don't know. Uh, I don't really think Mick Foley. I know he mentioned about doing a death match, but I don't think that would be in NXT. So uh, I'm not expecting that. But um, we did get that promo, that vignette again. But uh, nothing really new about it. Although, you know, the footsteps, they are interesting. Something to keep an eye on. Something else to keep an eye on is this former DPW world champion, Jay Malachi. His new name is Javon Evans. So he's 19, he's from Florida. Big, big, big prospect. Lots of excitement. And he has had his first match. So Jordan, thank you. Uh, WrestleOps here with the image. Javon Evans making his debut on Level Up against Brooks Jensen. So uh, I think this match is definitely worth checking out because Brooks Jensen on NXT, he was uh, pushed around a little bit by Briggs, his former tag partner who told him to grow up. And uh, Brooks Jensen has quietly been doing a few things behind the scenes, working on new presentation. He's got this real throwback kind of 80s vibe, and he's really leaning into the history of wrestling. I am so on board with what he's doing. I'm really excited by it. Um, I think he looks great. I love his presentation. I love his music. So um, if you've not seen the new Brooks Jensen, check the match out and then if you want to see one of the biggest prospects wwe have uh javon evans 19 this is going to be a match worth watching on nxt level up uh right thea hale desperately asking wwe shop and fanatics to help a girl out uh we need a restock of the calendars we've got a college to save so uh thea hale desperate so, uh, James, thank you. Uh, Shotzi saying, Vengeance Day was wild. Lyra and Roxanne tore it up. Wonder who will be Lyra's next challenger. I know someone. Maybe uh, teasing that she may step up and be Lyra's next challenger. So, uh, Marquez, thank you for uh, tagging me in that. 
James uh, tagging me in this news and looking sad. I can tell that from the emoji uh, that Camille is no longer expected to join WWE. Discussions haven't moved forward and she's in deep discussions with AEW. She is a former NWA Women's World Champion. Uh, she's basically like Jade Cargill. She is... Uh, fairly tall and she uh, lifts weights and she's like a female bodybuilder. She's absolutely shredded. Um, she looks amazing. She would have been a great signing by WWE. But I think they've actually got a fair few people recently, like Naomi, like Andrade, potentially Julia, potentially Okada. Like, there's quite a few people they've brought back. So they might look at this and think, well, we would like her, but we're not going to break the bank for her. It might be one of those. I can't see why you wouldn't want her. She's amazing. Wherever she goes, she's going to be a great signing. So definitely wish her all the best. Then we got this from uh, Jordan, uh, Mercedes Monet saying, oh, it feels good when executing a vision. Just remember this tweet. Just remember this tweet. Uh, then uh, Roxanne, I'm, I'm loving the presentation of Roxanne. Look how much more serious she is here. This was a digital exclusive interview. She says that she is sick of being cheated getting so close to getting that title back and someone comes in and interrupts her, like, you know, cheats her out of it. But you can see, like, how like, I'm always this close. Look how focused she is, how serious she is. I, I, I love this presentation. This is so much better. So I'm really excited about where we're going with Roxanne. So, um, brilliant, brilliant. Look at this, taking a deep breath. Love it. Excellent presentation. We're seeing some real character development there. So this from WrestleTalk, WWE staff sanctions crowd after explicit chants. So uh, there was F Mello chants, I believe, tonight on NXT. And staff had to tell the crowd, can you not chant that? Because we run the risk of being taken off air. Like, we can't have the F words. So the crowd were all, like, boisterous and loud, and they were doing the uh, F Mello chants. And, um, yeah, they had to be spoken to to not actually chant that. It's amazing, isn't it? Imagine a crowd being told off. Amazing. Uh, Thea Hale, right, here we go. So Thea Hale responded to that better for uh, post, saying, you're the least real person I've ever met. Bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> bit uncalled for. I don't know quite what he's done. Uh, but he responded by saying, what? I bought my twins your calendar and this is the tweet I get. And she responded saying, I retract my statement. <laughs> I retract my statement. I take it back. I take it back. Uh, and then look at this. Oro Mensa says we need Booker T back as fast as possible. And uh, poor Byron Saxton was like, dang, Mensa, dang. So Oro Mensa, I think, was just being kind about like, you know, we need to get Byron, um, we need to get uh, Booker back. And Byron Saxton saw it. <laughs> dang, Mensa. So that wasn't appreciated. Rhea Ripley, though, appreciated what she saw with Carmelo Hayes turning his back on Trick Williams. So you can see Rhea Ripley here applauding the turn from NXT Vengeance Day. Uh, Oro Mensa said, I hope your twins grow up to be half the men Noam and me are, right? So Oro Mensa has seen that Metaphor's graphic has been reimagined and says, I hope your uh, twins grow up to be half the men that me and Noam Dar are. And uh, Robert Stone said, well, they are already the same height and weight as you guys. <laughs> Honestly. Some of the stuff that goes on uh, on social media is really fun. Really, really fun. Right, Crispy Wrestling just pointing out that the crowd were chanting Ava's name, which is great to see um, because, unfortunately, she did deactivate her account today, which is, you know, very unfortunate um, because she's been driven away. The death threats are completely unacceptable. I don't know... 
what led to her deleting her account. I don't know if it was more death threats or if it was just a constant barrage of hate because she is The Rock's daughter. If you've uh, not seen The Rock's daughter, she is the one on the right. So really sad news that she was driven to delete her accounts. But um, what was great was that during NXT, when she was shown on screen, she wasn't being booed or anything. The crowd were chanting her name. So there is some positivity in the world, which is good to see. Uh, right, Isla Dawn said, excuse me, NXT, why didn't you share my tweet tonight? So you might have seen they put some tweets up about, like, uh, reacting to Vengeance Day. And uh, she's uh, attached the tweet, big fan of Lyra versus Roxanne, hashtag Vengeance Day. I don't know if the hashtag actually was NXT Vengeance Day. So maybe they just didn't see it, actually, looking at that. It might have been NXT Vengeance Day, the hashtag. Not sure. But either way, they didn't use it. And Isla Dawn is asking, excuse me, why didn't you use my tweet? Little bit entitled, but whatever. Uh, moving on. Uh, look at this. Sonya Bailey is saying Stevie Turner is so real for this. Now, I never noticed it at the time, but look at uh, Stevie over here on the left. She's just filming this going on, having a great time in the corner. So this is a little clip from uh, NXT. And Stevie is just watching it play out. Look, she's loving it. She's got a big smile on her face as she's uh, filming the action. Imagine if it turns out that she was NXT Anonymous. Remember, there's someone going around filming. And there, uh, there's Stevie uh, using her phone filming this footage. Interesting. Uh, Fightful Wrestling just uh, uh, reporting that shut up T-Bar chants were aimed at Dijak tonight during NXT. The crowd tonight were red hot. But it doesn't look like the crowd at AEW are going to be red hot because I told you to remember that tweet. Uh, Mercedes Monet saying, oh, it feels good when executing a vision. WWE Gareth says the vision. <laughs> <laughs> because if she's on her way to AEW, that is maybe what awaits her, is uh, a whole empty side of an arena. So uh, I thought that was a bit cheeky, and I thought you would appreciate it. Uh, look at this, Brady. Thank you. So this is from Instagram from King Kota. So look at this. This looks like a glimpse at WrestleMania 40 promo recordings, which must be taking place now. So this has gone up on uh, Dakota's Instagram. I wonder if she regrets putting this up because this is giving us a glimpse of something that has not aired yet. Look at that. That's sick. I mean, it feels very very Super Bowl. So, uh, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant little thank you. Thank you, Dakota. Right, after NXT, uh, it was an attack. An attack went down from uh, Carmelo. He ended up t attacking Joe Gacy. So uh, there was a brawl on the outside of the ring. You can see here, knocking him into the uh, barricade and then Carmelo just having a word with some of the fans. And um, look at this, the crowd still going off at Carmelo. Amazing, amazing. Joe Gacy, big, big smile on his face. So, right, let's jump over to uh, Dijak. Talking of Joe Gacy, during the promo, and we did notice this during our watch-along, his mask was shown in the NXT logo. So his mask was shown up there. Now, uh, I don't think it really means much other than he did... Uh, interfere of course um and he would come and uh use that um uh, boxing glove on a stick and he would get involved with that so that was earlier in the evening uh we've got a furious dijack that's got a message for joe gacy after he cost him the win against uh elia you can see dijack look at him going off man Dijak absolutely livid. Absolutely livid. Brilliant. Look at this. Oh, man. Look at this slow mo. So, Coach Code, thank you. Look at this. Look at this. Boo! And it felt like a potato as well. I mean, it really sounded horrific. And, and he cut all his head open and everything. 
So uh, you can see he properly, uh, properly connects with that shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm so gutted about this. I mean, obviously, you know, Ava did what she had to do or felt she had to do because of being harassed. But um, she was actually involved in an amazing conversation. And I was so excited to show it you. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it and I will do my best, right, so that we can reenact it. So uh, they put this tweet out, NXT saying that Carmelo was going to talk on NXT tonight or last night, whenever you're watching this. Uh, and so he did, of course. Uh, and they said he'll explain his actions for turning on Trick. Well, out of nowhere, Dijak said, I did it for The Rock. Famously, that was a Rikishi line. I did it for The Rock. So uh, Dijak, just having a bit of fun, just jumped in and said, I did it for The Rock. Now... What uh, this was, what this said, is that was Ava, who's The Rock's daughter. She said, Dijak, please. Right? Kind of like Dijak. N not now. I've got enough on my plate. Dijak, please. Uh, and so uh, it's obviously fun because she's The Rock's daughter. Problem is, when she said Dijak, she spelt his name wrong. She spelt it D-I-C-J-A-K. She added a C in there. Right. So the next one that was deleted was Ava again, just saying, sorry about the misspelling of your name. Right. Sorry about the misspelling. It's been a long day. Right. Look at this. Dijak responds. No worries. It doesn't matter what my name is. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, it's so good. He's using the rocks line to the rocks daughter. Oh, man, it's so good. Brilliant. That's one of my favorite exchanges I've seen between two wrestlers on social media ever. And it got ruined because she took her account down. So uh, obviously these tweets disappeared uh, at some point today. I mean, obviously there's other things going on that are more serious than this conversation, but <laughs> it's a brilliant conversation. Right. So we've done NXT, we've done DiJack. Let's have a look at the Cody stuff, shall we? And uh, as always, there's a fair bit to go through. Ooh. Right, here we go. Um, oh, yeah, this was random. Someone tagged Cody's tweet saying, Cody, I got arrested last night for breaking into a courtroom yelling, we want Cody. You got me with bail? Question mark, question mark. And that got a lot of attention. I have no idea if that's true. I really hope it isn't. Right, uh, Wrestling World CC, The Rock reportedly has no plans to pull out of WrestleMania 40 terms. Thank you, my friend. Here we've got uh, Evie. Look, my little girl made 40 handwritten signs. So she went along to uh, Raw and took all these signs and handed them out. Um, a lot of people were saying like, oh, WWE handed signs out. And they may have done, right? I can't account for every sign. Like WWE very well may have handed some signs out. But we are seeing some evidence that these ones were made by this little girl. And we will see in a second uh, other ones. So uh, this is who handed out the other signs. So Lars the Big Red Bear has got a stack of we want cody signs that have been printed that they did at home so these were fans that made them and took them and uh these ones were by this little girl as well so it is true um fan signs by and large were created by the fans by the looks of it but i can't prove every single sign was created by the fans it's undeniable that wwe leaned into the we want cody thing it's undeniable that they saw the reaction loved the reaction online loved didn't love the death threats but loved the reaction online and the passion for cody and on raw they leaned into it so it wouldn't surprise me if they did hand out a few signs. But um, yeah, it would be wrong to suggest they handed out all the signs. Like there's clearly fans here that uh, took it upon themselves to get that message out there. Here's uh, Ava as well. So you can see here, look, Ross saying some of y'all wrestling fans are legit the worst. 
uh, y'all keep being toxic to someone who had nothing to do with the Rock Roman situation. If you are one of these individuals sending death threats, go F yourself. So there is Ava's deleted account. Right, Cody Rhodes tried to warn them about the changes and they still went ahead. The decision has backfired because the fans are choosing Cody over The Rock. So Cody tried to tell WWE, if you change this, right, if you change the plan, there's going to be a backlash. He tried to warn them and they didn't listen. Brady, thank you. Brady again. So the NXT crowd were booing The Rock and you could hear, we want Cody chants. So they showed this graphic a few times during NXT. They are so promoting this. I mean, honestly, this feels like a premium live event. We will be live and we will be live hours before it starts, right? So if you want to come and share your thoughts, theories, opinions, we will be live. Um, but yeah, it could be pretty brutal for The Rock, to be honest. It could be pretty brutal because uh, people are making their feelings very well known. Uh, here at the baseball game, they played Cody Rhodes's music at this baseball game. I think it was a Yankees game as well. So not just some little local team like the New York Yankees, uh, which is amazing. Uh, Chan Man said, so here's what I'm thinking. Now, do you know what? This is quite interesting, right? This is quite interesting. Let's go back down to uh, uh, Chan Man. Where's Chan Man? Here. Oh, let's do the... Is that going to work? Thank you. Uh, right, so here's what I'm thinking. What do you think about this? Cody Rhodes fooled Roman Reigns into thinking he's not going to face him at WrestleMania by saying, I'm not going to face you at WrestleMania, right? He did say that on SmackDown. So after Roman signs the contract to face The Rock, so we've got Rock and we've got Roman, Roman signs the contract to face The Rock, makes it official, right? As soon as he has signed that contract, Cody chooses Roman. As soon as the contract's already been signed, he chooses Roman, right? Which he is allowed to do. He hasn't selected Seth, so now he can choose Roman. And as soon as Roman's already signed for a match, all of a sudden Roman has to have two matches, right this makes it so roman is tricked into wrestling two matches at wrestlemania we get roman versus rock for head of the table on night one cody versus roman for the title on night two cody's plan is to take everything from the rock um uh, cody's plan to take everything from roman goes into effect i thought that was brilliant the only thing i would say because it gets us the two nights, right? The only thing I would say is that it doesn't... Um, what's Cody going to do? Because it, there's going to be an argument that Roman works twice. So the argument's going to be, well, well, that means Roman is weakened on night two against a fresh Cody. So I don't know if Roman could come back and say, well, if I've got to wrestle twice, you've got to wrestle twice. And then maybe we end up getting... Cody and Seth in their match on day one. So we get Cody and Seth, maybe Cody, Seth and Drew, right? And we get Rock versus Roman on day one. And on day two, we do Cody versus Roman. And that's that could be day two. So that way they've both had a match. Neither is going to be more fresh than the other. Um you know, maybe at some point on day two, we could get both confirming they're feeling good. They're feeling 100 percent. I don't know. I, I thought that was a very, very interesting take. I thought that was a very interesting take. You'll have to let me know in the comments how you would feel about that one. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. So uh, Noli was the one that tagged me in it. Thank you. Says not a bad theory. I agree. I agree. We have spoken about a few ways out of this mess, right? There are ways out of this mess. That would be one of them, right? And we've thrown a few others around during the live streams. Um, 
So there, there is a way forward. There is a way to save this mess that will please, I think, pretty much everyone. Um, I'm sure there will still be people that will be disappointed, but there's a way of pleasing Rock fans and Cody fans. Rock having his match, Cody getting his match. There is a way forward. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't know that they're going to pull one of those rabbits out of the, the out of the hat like you are asking us to trust wwe creative and uh i don't know the track record would say to me that they don't always get it right ask Liv morgan if they got her title run right ask austin theory if they got his cash in right so no regrets zero regrets for the whole we want cody campaign At whatever happens you know, Cody was being cheated and we made our voices heard, right? And we still don't know what's going to happen. We still don't know what they're going to do at the... It could be awful. could be awful. It could be Rock Roman and it could be Cody Seth and that's it. Deal with it, right? So zero regrets for us making our voices heard and we want Cody. But I think just know that there, there are ways forwards. There are ways forwards. All hope is not gone yet. Uh, uh, Jono said, uh, just the greats passing the torch. So here is uh, Brock after putting Cody over. Here is Cena with uh, Cody as well. And then there's Cody passing the torch to the right. <laughs> you love to see it, don't you? You love to see a star who's yet to win his first world title passing the torch over to a multiple time champion uh someone that's had their career and retired you love to see it right uh i wanted to include this from uh, sam as well because we like to have balance and to be honest i don't get tagged in that much we want rocky stuff uh but here is uh triple h going roman cody no thank you but uh when it comes to rock roman that's the one. And there you can see uh, Sam with his hashtag, we want Rocky. I do want you to notice, though, I have not liked it. And I also have no intention of liking it as well. Uh, right. Wrestling News said Triple H knew about The Rock sign-in. The match with Roman when he booked Cody to win the Rumble. So this is interesting bit of news because this really is the part of this story which makes the least amount of sense. How did The Rock sign in early January and then Cody win the Rumble at the end of the month, right? Because when The Rock signed, apparently it was in his contract, he gets a match at WrestleMania. So how did he sign, get the match at WrestleMania, yet we still went forward with Cody winning the Rumble, right? Doesn't That's the bit that doesn't make sense. So this report here saying that Triple H did know about uh, the Rock signing and uh, probably the match at WrestleMania, you would, you would think so, yet he still went ahead with the Cody thing. It is very, very interesting. It is very interesting. So uh, we're going to have to see uh, kind of how it all plays out on Thursday. That is definitely the bit that makes the least amount of sense to me. Right here, we've got Mike saying, Cody Rhodes, I don't think this is a good idea. The fans won't be happy. WWE responded, don't worry about it, kid. They'll get over it. Fans respond with massive backlash and even Rocky sucks chants WWE's reaction. <laughs> some of the memes man they're so good they're so good right uh fightful are reporting that as of the week before the royal rumble cody rhodes was told he was working with roman reigns and the plan was cm punk versus seth rollins they had actually been multiple reassurances to the former it would be happening so do you see how I, what I mean by how these just don't make sense? We've got so many reports that kind of contradict each other. I mean, here you've got Cody. It, it says to me that The Rock signed, right? And his WrestleMania match was in there. And I wonder if Triple H, knowing Rock as well as what he does, was like, you've got to put that off. You can't do that match at WrestleMania. I've got plans already in motion. 
You can't do the match now. Like, we can do it in Saudi. We can do it at SummerSlam. Like, you can't do the match now. And Rock was like, oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Um, and maybe he was a bit uncertain. And so, you know, Triple H might have said, listen, Cody, it's looking pretty good. At the moment, it's you and Roman. And it's going to be um, CM Punk and Seth. And so I wonder if, like, that's why he was told this. And then, obviously, CM Punk gets injured. Brock is out of WrestleMania. All of a sudden, that's a hit to the star power. And I wonder if, at that point, The Rock went, no, WrestleMania needs me now. I know you've been trying to dissuade me, but it needs me. Find a way of getting me into uh, the match with Roman. And I wonder if that's the timeline. That's just me putting pieces together, right? It would explain why Triple H knew about The Rock. It would explain why Cody was told in the builds that, uh, no, it will be fine. We'll sort it. You, it. At the moment, it's you and Roman, right? It would explain that. It would explain why this hasn't made sense with this swerve, right? So I wonder if it's somewhere along those lines. Just food for thought. Right, I think that's it for the Cody folder. So uh, I think that means that we can... We've done NXT other. We could just go to other. Right, okay. Yeah, this is interesting. And I cannot confirm this, right? I cannot confirm this. But uh, in the background here, I would make the picture bigger, but you still can't really tell anything, to be honest. But um, uh, Jordan just wondering, is that Jacob Fatu? Now, what I would say is this is a backstage thing. So I can't see why it would be an issue for Jacob Fatu to be backstage. He's not on camera or anything. And we know he has been going to shows. Um, he is a free agent. It would be very interesting if he was to join WWE. Um, I can't confirm if that is him. Jordan seems to be fairly convinced it is. I can't confirm it. But to be honest, this is a backstage shot. Jacob Fatu being backstage at WWE, considering he's related to Roman, related to the Usos, related to Solo Sokoa. Um, I don't know. I could see it being true. I could see it being true. But I don't know that it's an indicator of anything. Then we've got uh, Natalia saying, I've got so many exciting things ahead. Now, this was an interview with uh, Sean Rossap and Fightful. And she said that there may be a heart family film in the works she said she couldn't confirm it but she did see iron claw and there are a lot of stories that need to be told she said she watched iron claw and got in touch with brett and brett told her that the von erics got into wrestling because of the hearts and that the von erics had actually stayed at the heart house for a few months um, and actually had done some training and stuff. And she said, did you know Gorilla Monsoon also trained in the Heart Dungeon? And she's like, we've got all these stories that need to be told. So she is working on some really exciting sounding projects. So definitely keep an eye on uh, on that. Someone else to keep an eye on is Odyssey Jones. So WrestleTalk saying it's been nine months since the WWE draft. Odyssey Jones was called up to Raw during the draft, but is yet to make a single appearance on main roster TV. Jones has now been working house shows with Cameron Grimes. So Cameron Grimes is in a tag team with Odyssey Jones at the moment on house shows. Could that be a team we see introduced to TV soon? And is it going to ever happen? Like, he got called up nine months ago. And there's been no sighting of this guy other than house shows. So just someone to be aware of. Uh, interesting story here from uh, Chris. He said, I'll never forget when I was working the ESPY Awards. And Montez asked for diet water. And I had all the servers scrambling around for diet water. And Bianca said, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Laughing emojis. And uh, there he is still trying to figure out what diet water. It, what is diet? Why hasn't water got no calories? What is diet water? I, I, maybe it is like a prank. Do you know what I mean? Like if someone asks for like tartan paint and it's not a thing, right? Perhaps diet water isn't a thing and it's just Montez being, uh, being a bit cheeky. 
I kind of want to search for diet water now. <laughs> Knowing the world, though, it probably exists. And tart and paint probably exists now as well, you know. Now, I've got to tell you, I uh, don't really do trigger warnings because we don't really do anything that I think is going to trigger people. But this next, next post is a bit tricky, to be honest. It is 9-11. Uh, it does relate to uh, Zelina Vega. So I am going to say, like, if this is something that you might find a bit distressing, then just be aware that we are going to talk about 9-11. We are going to talk about something which... Uh, i got to tell you, I read this post and it sort of stuck with me a little bit, sort of stuck with me a little bit. So I'm just giving you that heads up if you want to just uh, go to the description and maybe skip this one. But um, let's read this from uh, Zelina, because I think it's a really interesting point that she makes. So Zelina says, not many people know what it's like to scroll through social media and get what feels like a knife plunged through your heart just at random it's like the wound opens back up every time it may seem like another day in history to some but to know that my dad was in that it still haunts me so obviously she lost her father in 9 11 and i think that is a real insight into oh what it must be like to you know just going about your life and then you know it was such a big event of course to just see this and know that your dad was a victim of this um you know as i said it's the kind of thing that just that one stuck with me and i uh, really debated whether to include it or not but i think it's such a powerful and i suppose random thing but like yeah that one stuck with me and i thought that um i thought i should include it maybe i shouldn't i don't know but uh either way yeah uh then we've got paul Heyman saying a most relevant invitation so he's just uh inviting people to the press conference of course on, of course on thursday just to uh, uh, cheer you up a little bit, I don't know if this is Sid Vicious, but either way, this is hilarious. Ryback is still dumb. Now, if that is the real Psycho Sid, that makes it even better. If it's not the real Psycho Sid, it's probably still relevant, isn't it? So, <laughs> Right. Then we've got this from uh, uh, Mills, uh, who says, there's a weird understory here of coincidence. Every person Cross has come across, win or loss, has had a major change in direction. I really hope the string continues to unravel. It's been a fun stream of conscience, conscience to keep an eye on. And actually, Carrion retweeted that. So you might remember Carrion did a promo a little while back and he spoke about his victims, people that he'd been in feuds with and how they had changed after. So how he had kind of brought change about them. I think like Rey Mysterio had snapped on Dominic after being in a feud with Carrion. I think Drew had kind of snapped after being in a bit of a feud with Carrion. And, and he kind of went through a bit of a list of people he had feuded with and how they had changed. And so uh, uh, you can see that Miles uh, Twitch here is just saying, like, you know, it's been fun. I hope this continues. And uh, Carrion just retweeting this. So maybe something to just keep an eye on. Uh, Magic uh, just tagging me in this from WrestleMania. So since they started to erase Brock Lesnar, does that mean that Undertaker is now 22-0 and 0 again? So you might remember that Brock was the one that ended the streak. Well, if they are erasing Brock Lesnar, does that mean that the Undertaker now is undefeated again? I mean, to be honest, no, because he did lose to Roman Reigns. Um, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I got the point. Uh, right, uh, Paul, thank you for this. Uh, look at this, JBL. Look, oh my God. Look at that. I think that might be from GC Dub, right? Oof, right? Uh, might have to start watching wrestling again, said Champagne Sloshy. JBL said, I'm barely retired and everyone is stealing my moveset. It is so frustrating. <laughs> because <laughs> you might remember JBL doing that in WWE. And if you can't, it's because he clearly never did that. He never even dreamed of being able to do that, but I thought it was a fun tweet anyway. 
Right, casual LA night enjoyer said another criminal gets away with their crimes. So Liv Morgan, uh, her case is now officially closed. I think the court docket shows she was fined about $500. That seemed to be what it suggested to me. So um, a casual LA night enjoyer, it's only joking. Right, I saw a few people taking this seriously. So uh, only joking. I took it as the joke it is. Um, but it is also very serious. Criminals shouldn't be let free. She is a criminal. She did wrong. And she should have served hard times in the... <laughs> <laughs> in the words of the big boss man but uh instead she gets off scot-free disgrace then uh again tagging me in this about um toby keith which uh obviously very very sad news wwe putting this out uh he was a guest host and i believe he had also featured in wcw as well but I mean, all of that are relevant. Massive country music star. And uh, I know that a lot of people have uh, mourned his passing today. Uh, and wow, yeah, I mean, wow, massive news. So Fox, ESPN, Warner Brothers Discovery are teaming up to create a joint streaming platform to share sports assets. This could be big news for AEW because they are on Warner Brothers Discovery. So if ESPN, Fox and Warner Brothers are creating a streaming platform, right? And they're going to share their sporting assets. AEW is apparently listed as a sporting asset. AEW could find themselves going on to that platform, right? That could be big for them. That could be big exposure for them to be on this platform. So uh, things looking very interesting for AEW right now. This won't be uh, well received by WWE fans. But to be honest, I don't think WWE fans should be that bothered. I've got to think that WWE were aware that this was going to happen, right? I've got to think that uh, we know they had talks with Warner Brother Discovery. And, um, you know, WWE made the choice they made. So they're off to Netflix getting billions of dollars. They're fine. But uh, looks like AEW may benefit from this in the future. So, yeah, just something to be aware of. Uh, right, there's a vacancy in creative, and here you can see Bully Ray saying that he has submitted his resume. I would love Billy Kay to submit her resume as well. So, uh, um, the real Izzy, shout out to you, my friend. Appreciate you tagging me in that. Uh, Trent, thank you. 90s WWE Drake the Snake. <laughs> That's pretty fun, isn't it? Drake the Snake. WWE Ethan just tagging me in this. There is a Dakota injury update. Uh, this was on her Instagram. So uh, she is working hard in the gym and uh, she is uh, getting closer to that return. Brady, thank you. Asker putting this out. Kyrie, can we pick up that hitchhiker? And there's the hitchhiker. Uh, Kyrie, can we stop for ice cream, says the hitchhiker. And you can see they're thinking about it. And then there they are with ice cream. Yeah, quite. What a journey. What a story that has been told in just those four panels. Absolutely brilliant. That's from uh, Asker just three hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Brilliant, brilliant work. Uh, right, James, tag me in this. Thank you. Uh, so Brian Pillman merch is apparently coming soon. So uh, the Brian Pillman estate have signed a merch deal. So Brian Pillman merch on the way. Uh, there's the vacancy for the uh, creative team. So uh, as we said, Bully Ray has uh, gone in for that. And then uh, this from Sean. So you can see they've changed the cover of 2K24. Brock here next to The Undertaker has been removed. John Cena in his place. So John Cena was a little bit lower. He's been replaced by Triple H. Triple H was a little bit lower. No one has replaced Triple H. They've just sort of moved those bottom superstars around. So uh, I don't think anyone additional has been added. I just think they've sort of rejigged it to replace Brock. So again, 
Just something to be aware of. Uh, Edward just letting me know that uh, it was a fan that uh, printed those signs off. We looked at that earlier. And Alex, thank you. Uh, this is Brock Lesnar guy, right? And um, uh, <laughs> Brock Lesnar guy, who you might remember, uh, was like, ah. I think when he first came back, he was shown in the crowd and he threw his arms back. And you see him at the shows quite a bit. He's a bit like green shirt guy, but maybe not quite as famous. And uh, But he's known as Brock Lesnar guy. And uh, he said, you know, sometimes I just don't even know who I am anymore. Because it's true, isn't it? He is Brock Lesnar guy, but if Brock Lesnar is now cancelled, does he just become I'm that guy? That I mean, that's what he's changed his name to, isn't it? He's still at Brock Lesnar guy, but uh, his name is now I'm I'm that guy. There's a picture of him. So uh, catch me on Raw Monday, NXT Tuesday, Dynamite Wednesday, Impact Thursday, SmackDown Friday, Rampage Friday. Where will I end up next? He tends to be at uh, WrestleManias and the big shows. Um, but as we said, maybe not quite the same level as a green shirt guy or my personal favorite, Trinidad flag guy. Yeah. Clearly the goat of the WWE universe. Well, maybe it's Vlad. But Trinidad flag guy right now. But um, yeah, just thought I would uh, chuck that in uh, because uh, that's quite the conundrum, isn't it? He's got to try and figure that out. So listen, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be back tomorrow. I'm sure there will be more uh, stuff for us to put in an unseen uh, episode. Of course, tomorrow, AEW, we're not covering it. My friend Tommy Toy Travels will be uh, if you want to join up with the community and uh, watch AEW. I will put a link to that on the Wrestling Days uh, channel. And uh, obviously, Tony Khan has got a big announcement. Will it be connected to that new streaming platform? Don't think so. The general consensus is it's going to be a Boston show and that that's where Mercedes is going to make her debut. So that's the consensus. But we'll wait and see. I'm sure a video will hit the channel regarding that tomorrow. So thanks a lot for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for uh, all the support. I'm really pleased to hear so many of you enjoying these videos. I enjoy making them. And uh, as long as you enjoy watching them and joining me, uh, then that will hopefully continue for a long time to come. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye for now.